Income tax 2021-2022. Marginal and average tax rates. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into income tax 2021-2022. As we have seen in prior presentations, the federal income tax system in the United States is a progressive tax system, meaning we have different layers involved. We have different tax rates, the rates going up as income levels go up. But we also talked about the idea that progressive can be a term that's going to be relative as well. So in other words, although we would basically categorize the federal income tax system as a progressive tax, we can imagine a tax being more progressive, possibly by having more layers that would be involved or possibly by having bigger increases in the amounts as we go from one layer to the other we can imagine a tax being less progressive having less layers involved we can also use the other term which is often compared and contrasted which would be a flat tax so a flat tax being defined as a tax that only has one rate a flat rate or a pure flat rate would only have one rate but if you were to decrease the number of layers, you could say that you're flattening the progressive tax system out in that way. When people use the term flattening, they also mean if they're using it as a favorable term that they're trying to make the tax code easier. And when you're making it more progressive, then you're usually if you're using it in a positive term, you're trying to say you're trying to put the tax burden on people that can afford it on the upper end. But on the negative side, you're also possibly making it more complex that would be the idea so now if we apply the rates then when we talk about well what tax rate are you paying that gets quite confusing as well when you're looking at projections out what should i basically do if i'm projecting into the future as i'm making changes to what my income will be in the future then how, what rate should i apply should i apply for example an average rate so meaning if I get taxed at multiple different rates, I have to pick an average of it, or should I use basically the last rate, the marginal rate? These are questions we have to ask just from a practical standpoint. And these are questions that many tax preparers don't understand because they only know, because really when we do the tax preparation, it's for dependent on the tax software. We're just gonna be doing the data input. The data input's gonna make the tax return, which is basically an income statement and then it's gonna apply the tax and we're not gonna get into the details of this progressive tax structure. We're gonna let the software do that. So when people ask us questions about, well, what, how much tax am I actually paying on a rate basis? It's a little bit confusing question. If I'm gonna make more income next year, how much more am I going to pay? That's gonna be confusing because uh, we have this progressive tax system and we have to understand the concept of an average tax versus a marginal tax to answer those questions. And those numbers will usually be given in tax software. You just need to understand what those numbers are telling you within the tax software and how to apply that as you're discussing it to your own plans or to your client's plans. So the progressive tax system, you'll recall, is going to have these different layers in it. So let's say we earned you know, a lot of money here. The idea then would be that you're going to be taxed at different levels within it. Now, the, con the misconception that many people have is that if I go up to a different tax bracket, all my income is going to be taxed at that higher bracket. Now, one, that would be kind of not fair. That would be kind of really kind of a, a big disincentive. So, for example, if you were going from the 24 tax bracket and the next dollar you made from 194925 to 164926 brings all of your income, all 164,926 to be taxed at 32% as opposed to 24%, you have a really big incentive, if that were the case, which it's not, to avoid earning that last dollar because, because it's gonna cost you a lot in taxes because all of your income would be taxed. That's not, that's not how it works. What's gonna happen is that last dollar will be taxed at the 32%. So there's still a disincentive as the progressive tax system goes up but the disincentive is only on the added dollars that you're earning. So you might say, hey, you know, it's not worth me working any more over and above this income level because, I'm, because the government is taking a higher portion. That could happen if the rates go up a lot at some, at some point, but presumably you, you still have the incentive to work you know, up to that point, right? So that would be the general idea of it there. So for example, if you had the 10% bracket, if you earned anything under the 9950, the 9950, then you, you can multiply it times as 10%. It's basically a flat tax up to that point because you only have one layer. But if you earn more than 9950, somewhere between 9951 
and 40,525, then that first 9950 times 10% would be the 995, which they'll give to you here in the table, plus you would have to have the difference, whatever the difference was, if you earned, you know, 10,000, 10,000 minus the 9950 plus the uh, 12%, would then would then or i mean <laughs> minus times the 12 percent that you would have to go through no one actually does that because they're going to use the tax software in tables to help them out with that calculation but that's you know the kind of complexity that's in it so then if you've earned over that in threshold at the 40,526, you're being taxed at three different rates the first 9950 that you earned at 10 percent the everything above that up to the to the ceiling of 40,525 at 12%, everything up that according up to whatever you owed, let's say 50,000, you would then have to calculate the difference at the 22%. So this 4664 then would be would be, you know, what the tax would be up until the 40,526. So in other words, if I was to calculate that, we would say, okay, if, let's say we earned 40,526 then on the second tier it would be 40525 minus the 9951 times the 12 percent times 0.12 plus the 995 is the 4664 which is the floor or the starting point of this one up until that floor 40,526 and then anything above that let's say you earn 50,000 you'd have to take 50,000 minus the 40,526 and then they kind of calculated this portion for you. So you take that difference time the 22% and then add this 4664. So that's the idea. Again, no one actually does that because that's a really tedious thing. And it's not only that that you would have to do in practice on the tax return because there's sometimes when they actually apply a whole different tax rate altogether, such as for like capital gains tax could be at a different rate. For example, dividends could be taxed at a different rate. So when you actually get to the tax calculation, you almost have to be dependent on the computer to calculate it and help you out with that calculation. But then you're going to have questions from your clients saying, well, what am I going to do then next year when I plan to earn more money? What, what am I going to do in that instance? How much tax am I actually paying? What's the rate that I'm actually paying if I'm paying a progressive income tax system? I would like to know that ratio just so I can understand, you know, what is going on here. So for that, you can either use an average tax or you can take a look at the marginal tax rate. So the average tax rate is going to take the total tax, what you're actually paying after you do that calculation, which most people will get from the tax software and divide it by the taxable income. The taxable income being a somewhat confusing term in and of itself, because that's going to be that's going to be the the income that you earned minus the deductions that you have basically the income statement some of which some of those deductions are not really expenses that you needed to incur in order to generate the income which you would think would be natural type of deductions so even that it's, it's still a little bit confusing in terms of what you're actually paying based on kind of your income but that's one method you can kind of say this is my taxable income compared to my tax for example, if I had ta total tax of 20,000 that I paid, this is just an arbitrary example just to get the ratio and the taxable income was 100,000. In that case, your average tax would be 20%. Now, the other thing that kind of throws a wrench into this, confuses this whole thing is the credits, because when you take the credits that are gonna be involved, which we'll talk more about when we get to the income tax formula, that also kind of kind of confuses things a bit. So we'll talk more about that later, but for now, we got the 20%. Now, if you'd look at the marginal tax rate, then you're just taking the last tax rate that applies. So in other words, if you earned, if you earned something between 9,951 and 40,525, the last tax rate that was applied to you would be the 12%. The 12% was not the rate that was applied to all the income that you made, but it's the highest rate that was applied. That's important because if you're making decisions going into the future, you don't want to know the average tax rate, you want to know the marginal tax rate. In other words, if you're doing tax planning or projections for yourself or others, and you're saying, hey, I'm going from, so my income is going from like, let's say 40,000, and it's going to go up to 50,000, 
Well, then you got you got to know that the, those last dollars are not going to be taxed at the average tax rate. The average tax rate's an average of what you have paid, but as you your income goes up, your tax is going to now be taxed at the highest rate. So you got to look at the, the highest tax brackets you're going to be in. And so that's going to be a really relevant number, important number when people are doing projections. And you want to be careful with that. So if people ask you the general question, I just want to know, you know, like, like what's my average tax that I'm basically paying? Just so I know like how much I actually pay. Well, that's going to be the average tax. But if I want to know, hey, look, I expect to make more money next year. What's going to be the impact on the margin? And that's an economic term from economics on the margin always means basically what's what's the pros and cons of the next step. I'm already here. What about the next step? What's the next step going to do? Well, the next step, if you're already at this tax bracket, is not going to be taxed at the average, which will always be lower. It'll be taxed at your highest tax bracket or higher, depending if you're going up to a higher tax bracket. So you got to you got to understand the difference between those two. We'll take a little a look at it in income tax software later, but just from a formula standpoint, this is just the income tax formula in Excel. We'll talk more about it later, but let's say you just had income of 100,000 and we only had the standard deduction of the 12550, that would give us the taxable income of the 87450. That's usually what people kind of double check in the tax software. That's what you can get from your your data form, your W-2 and whatnot. And then you often rely on the tax software to calculate the actual rate, which is the progressive tax system. It's applying tables and the progressive tax system. Once it does that, then you can say, okay, well, what's my actually tax? If it was the tax was 15,015, uh, then I can see my average tax would be, the, would be this uh, taxable income divided, I mean, sorry, the tax divided by the taxable income would give us the average tax. And so you could kind of figure out the average tax uh, that way. But from a projection standpoint, you want the marginal tax. And we'll talk more about this in the software later. But if you look at software, this is in Lacert, then it'll typically give you, here's your, here's your 1040. We'll talk more about this in a future presentation, but here's your 1040. And then if you were looking like a tax summary, most software has some kind of tax summary, which will give you kind of a side-by-side -side from the prior year. I don't have anything in the prior year, but they give you these items down below the marginal tax rate is the highest tax rate that was that was applied out here and then the effective tax rate is the average tax rate so if someone is asking you know how much did i pay on average well you could you could explain the calculation but we're talking 17.2 percent the marginal tax rate what's the highest tax bracket what am i going to be paying taxes on if i earn more money in the future 24 is your current marginal tax bracket and if you go above a certain level you'll be going up above and paying the next bracket up and usually tax softwares in the diagnostics and in the analysis will tell you when they will hit that next level or the next tier so you can appropriately um, give some advice in terms of what earnings might do in the future